Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 16, titled Nightmare in National City. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we begin with the classic Supergirl intro, and I don't know if it's me, but maybe I missed it week after week. But I don't remember actually hearing the My Name is Kara zor intro. But nevertheless, it was a great start to the episode because I got all the nostalgia feels. And although this isn't like your normal Supergirl episode, I feel like they hit most of the points that kind of make it Supergirl. Although I don't think it's like one of the strongest episodes of this season. I think it was like a mixed bag and I'm going to explain why in this video. So stick around for the whole time. Obviously, don't go anywhere, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my first point. And that is to do with Dreamer. This is like a half Dreamer episode, half Team Supergirl episode, but it's obviously very focused on Kara and her sort of struggle to be both Supergirl and Kara Danvers at the exact same time. And so, yeah, Dreamer gets a lot of stuff this episode. We also see the return of her sister, Maeve. We're going to talk about her in a bit. But at the start of the episode, Dreamer tries to locate the Dream Totem, and she is able to successfully do it eventually. It doesn't come straight away, but also at the same time, Nixley is after it. Talks to an alternate version of herself from the future, maybe? That is one of the questions that I wrote down as I was watching it. I think they definitely meant you to, you know, kind of question what is going on like is this actually Lex talking to her or is this an actual alternate version of herself obviously it's the exact same voice as herself so it's quite confusing and this is all because of the device that Lex gave her last episode with the gift package that came through the portal and so going over to Katko once again Andrea is absolutely infuriating because she still gets nothing about journalism and she's still on about the clicks, and despite Kara's incredible pitch about this great story, she barely budges, and she only budges because she sees that maybe this could have, like, a big readership number over the seas, and, you know, they could make it into some sort of clickbait piece. And so, yeah, she's annoying. She kind of makes a different step this episode. Like, she's not just purely the annoying boss, but she actually gets a little bit involved, but that's definitely because of how the Catco story ends at the end of this episode, which we'll get into once we get to that point. And so Nia meets her sister once again, who has changed her name, and she says that she knows about the Dream Totem, she studied it, and she thinks it's in the Dream Realm. Meanwhile, Nixley, again led by supposedly herself, the inner voice with inside of her, defeats Team Supergirl and goes into the dream portal, releasing a nightmare monster on National City, which causes absolute chaos and Team Supergirl have to struggle to try and stop this monster from destroying everything. So they, in the heat of the moment, put up a dome, which will be later a very controversial decision. And so she's in the dream realm and she's still looking for the dream totem, but Team Supergirl fails to stop her, so it's all down to Nia and her sister in order to stop her by the end of the episode when they actually meet. And so this nightmare creature is, you know, obviously causing havoc, and it's at this point that Brainy notifies Team Supergirl about Nia and Maeve going into the dream realm in order to try and get the totem. And it's at this point that they find the literal doorway into the dream realm. Well, actually, they called it the dream expanse, so it's a secluded space inside the dream realm, which is an extension of the dream realm, and it also harbors, obviously, the dream totem, which is guarded by a certain protector. Obviously, the protector is not alive anymore, so basically, the powers at B are only able to stop someone who is completely unworthy like Maeve, but someone like Nixley can definitely get the totems and she does successfully take the totem and escape while Dreamer tries to stop her. And so Nixley's there and you know the whole time she's following and she's kind of led on to the totem by Nia. Obviously it's kind of Nia's fault that she's not more aware 
that Nixie has been following her, and if she was more aware, she probably could have stopped her before she got anywhere near the totem. And so, talking about some of my troubles with the episode, I think mainly my troubles were to do with Maeve and the way that her dialogue was written. I mean, her sole purpose in this episode was to add drama, apart from the ending, which was good, when they actually reconciled because that was something different and that was an actual character moment, but most of it is in service of the plot, so she's there to serve drama for Dreamer, and then also she's there to give information because she has spent her whole life researching the Dream Totem, she knows everything about the Dream Totem and the Dream Realm, and even the Expanse, so pretty much as they go in, they figure everything out pretty easy, and it seems all too easy. Yes, I know that she is a genius in all of this and she's well researched, but I don't know, for TV and for narrative, it just seemed a little bit too easy that she could kind of assist Nia in all of this stuff like straight away without hesitation. But back with Supergirl, obviously there is quite a lot, and like I said, it's mainly split like half-half, but it is a primarily Dreamer episode because it's about the Dream Totem, and you know, she's facing off against the main villain, while Team Supergirl is facing off against the Nightmare creature, and obviously they're able to stop the creature, but the creature doesn't have much personality, so it's kind of just like this big threat for National City, and so that's why it's definitely more so on the dreamer side, that is the main focus. But, so at this point, Supergirl is faced with riots about what they've chosen to do with the dome around National City. Obviously they are threatened by governments and everything, and William later comes to them and tells them, oh, the people are scared, like even the leaders are scared, and they want to be free, and they want to not be held down, and so the dome obviously represents their greater fears, I would say. And also William asked Supergirl to do an interview, but she denies because she's like so busy. Well, obviously Kara is super busy, but William doesn't know Kara is Supergirl as well. And this episode, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is a lot about Kara struggling with her true identity. Is she a reporter? Is she a journalist? Or is she a superhero full-time? And, you know, basically she split, so she needs to make the decision, am I going to stay with one or am I going to go with the other, because I can't be split between the two of these because I can't give my 100%. So, like, someone like William is giving his 100% to reporting because he doesn't have to do anything else in the meantime. So I totally get Kara's struggle, and I think that was actually one of the best things in this episode was their exploration of that. And so Andrea gets mad at Kara for being absent, from one of the meetings and obviously they set up the interview and she heads to the interview but she ends up missing it because she flies off and becomes Supergirl again and takes down the nightmare creature. Obviously she's doing the right thing, however the world leaders obviously aren't very open to kind of waiting around so she has to reschedule it for the next day but then some big revelation comes across Kara's mind and We'll get to that in a minute because that is huge and that is definitely the biggest part of this episode. And so Kara has a little chat with Alex about the way that she's been since she returned from the Phantom Zone. She thinks that it's impacted her in a big way. So she thinks her troubles are being split between these two worlds is definitely something to do with her mindset since she came back from the Phantom Zone. And so Maeve in the dream world on the dreamer side of the story tries to steal the dream totem from Nia, obviously this is a detriment to the entire world if she were to just steal it out of nowhere and gain its powers, obviously this means that she's not worthy because she's trying to steal it and the totem denies her, but this is obviously a big shock to Dreamer, to Nia, because this is something that she didn't expect, like she was helping her this whole way, but secretly she's been deceiving her because she's just so jealous that she has to get the dream totem for herself, and she believes that she's always meant to be a dreamer, and it wasn't supposed to be Nia, and it's still not supposed to be Nia, even with Nia being a hero across National City for many, many people, while she's literally been withering away in her textbooks, being like, how can I find the dream totem, and how can I be as powerful as the real dreamer, and so it's at this point where Nixley breaks up their fight, 
and she drops a couple of lines which were funny, but then Nia shows herself to be a proper hero, a proper selfless hero, and she is able to try and take down Nixley, although it's not 100% successful, but obviously comparing Dreamer to her sister, you could see she's definitely much more selfless than her selfish sister. But let's jump to the biggest point of this entire episode, and I teased this just a minute ago, but Kara literally just quit Katko out of nowhere. Without a doubt, this is a shocking moment. I never expected Kara to quit Katko, especially since she's been there since the beginning of season one, and she loves her reporting job. However, I must say, it does make sense in terms of the story, so I'm not saying that this is a bad decision, I just thought, wow, this will never ever happen because she loves her job so much, and yes, Andrea is a terrible, terrible boss, and she's run Katko into the ground pretty much, but Kara is still great at her job, and you know, it's like her lifelong dream, but she quits Katko in the end, which is absolutely crazy, but at least she gives the story to William because she knows that William is like 100% into it and that she's kind of split and she knows that she could do better if she was fully into the journalism thing but right now the world needs Supergirl seemingly more than it needs Kara and it's just funny because they emphasized in the last episode that the world needs Kara as a journalist and that's like another heroic side of herself but in this episode she obviously quits so that's not going to be a thing and considering we're going into the final four episodes of the entire series she's most likely not going to join back at Catco so it seems like this is the end of days for Catco and the only remaining strands at Catco that we have is William and Andrea and that's about it so Kara is officially gone seems like Catco is completely going into the ground with all of their best reporters leaving and not being there anymore. So, wow, that was a shocking moment. And let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. What was your reaction? Let me know in the comments down below. And so after this, we have Nia who offers her sister a final chance to redeem herself. Obviously, she's made many big mistakes and this episode really emphasized how much of a selfish person she is and Basically, she needs to learn a lot, and so presumably she's going to become better by listening to Nia and understanding that she needs to accept her as Dreamer, despite her wanting to be Dreamer over all of these years. And one other issue I had in this episode, and I've had it over the last couple of episodes that I wanted to actually voice in this video is, you know, the idea of Team Supergirl getting loads of negative press. This is hammered in this episode. There is a couple of news reports and there is like a few lines about Team Supergirl and the way that the Super Friends have sort of reacted against all these threats in National City over the last couple of weeks. Obviously it's been very destructive and it's caused a lot of havoc, that is for sure. However, they are there at the end of the day to protect the city and they will do whatever it takes to do that. So I feel like a lot of the negative press is very unwarranted and it's just journalists kind of not accepting the fact that Team Supergirl needs some sort of leeway in order to defeat these huge threats because if they didn't have the dome, I mean the creature, the nightmare creature could have been absolutely anywhere going and wreaking havoc. So I kind of disagree with this negative press because I do think they are much less controversial than they are making it out to be. But anyway, that is a little rant right there. Let's move on to the last point in this episode and this was huge. So the Dream Totem activates as Nixley puts the Dream Totem in the gauntlet, and what happens is the alternate self fades away and becomes none other than Lex Luthor. What a way to end an episode. I absolutely loved it, and I loved Lex's final line and Nixley's final line. Nixley says, who are you? And then he says, the key to your success. I love that twist. Obviously, we knew Lex was coming in this episode. It's been teased. And also, you know, this whole episode, he's been leading her on, and it turns out he's been the one that's been in her ear rather than an alternate version of herself. And so, it's an obvious twist that was eventually going to come to fruition, but it's just so good. I can't wait to see John Cryer once again as Lex Luthor, because I really do think he's one of the best things about the show, and it's definitely a welcome addition. 
I hope they do him really good justice as this will be the last four episodes that we'll see Lex Luthor in pretty much ever unless he shows up on any other Arrowverse shows. But yeah, just big up John Cryer, he is amazing, I freaking love that guy and I can't wait to see next week's episode. But that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Tell me what did you think of this episode and my video as a whole. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.